Hey what's up friends, welcome back to another exciting oxygen tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to do something really exciting. We're going to take a look at how to create overlapping columns using oxygen CSS grid 100% no custom CSS. What you're seeing on your screen is an overlapping uh, CSS grid, okay, CSS grid overlap columns and this does not make use of any absolutely position element, neither does it make use of any margins, negative margins, positive margins, whatever you call it. This is pure CSS grid overlap and it's all done in Oxygen Builder. CSS grid is one of the most complicated CSS properties because there's just so many moving parts. It takes so many ways to do specific things. For instance, you, there are so many ways to achieve the same thing in CSS grid and, and thanks to that complexity, we are going to be able to do what we are doing today. So let's jump into Oxygen. Now I want to add a section and in that section I want to have a div with two divs inside it. So I'm going to use the shortcut image, uh, uh, the new Oxygen's feature. So I'm going to go ahead and add a section and then uh, inside that section I want to give it a class grid container and then inside that div that is grid container class I'm going to add two divs. So I'm going to write div times two and hit enter. Uh, we have a section with a div and then there are two divs here and now we want to use this as a grid container so uh, you want to make that a hundred percent width so anytime you want to use a grid container you, it's always good to make it a hundred percent width it would be nice if oxygen made that the default once you click this it automatically causes that to go a hundred percent um that's what i feel would be the you know most for most use cases that would be beneficial what i'm going to do is to go ahead and take a look at how we're going to create this so we have uh, this uh, grid and we have this overlapping this let's go back there and then we're going to activate grid uh, first of all I'm going to make it two columns and I'm going to make a minimum width of zero and then and I want to close in all the gaps okay uh, but inside this div let me add the things that I want to add so I'm going to use image again and then I'm going to add a h2 and plus a paragraph plus a button and then so we have that so for that div I want to give it uh, a 2.8 rem all round padding okay and then I want to give it a background color of white and I also want to give it a drop shadow let's go into effect box shadow I'm going to select the color of the box shadow it's going to be something like that and then I'm going to make this 10 10 28 blur or let's say 20 blur and negative 10 spread and I think I have what I want there. For this other one, I want to give it a background uh, image. So I'm just going to browse in there and pick this image. And here I want to give this section uh, maybe a background color, something like that, just to accentuate the white. So let's save that. Now, of course, I've tweaked my oxygen interface. I don't have to wait for the save to finish, okay? So I can go ahead and work. All right. So now what I want to do is to start. A process that will enable me to get this. The column count is the most important thing here. So what you want to do is to make sure you set your column count to 10. It is not compulsory that it must be 10, but 10 enables you to easily, you know, understand the percentage in when you want to distribute your columns. So when you have 10 columns, you know that if you want to make it 40%, that is, is going to be four columns, 50% is going to be five columns and so on. So I recommend using 10. And we have that effect, okay? So I'm gonna go all the way down here uh, to the child span override. I wanna start first with the one that has a background. Um, let me come here and I want that to span. Now, you see here, it doesn't span the whole 10, so it spans like maybe seven. So um, if you go ahead to write, say column span seven, it just spans seven. We don't just want it to span seven, we want it to move to the end. The first number you're seeing here, seven, defines how many column it is going to span. But the second number, when we put the slash, is going to define where it is going to end. Uh, now, let me take away that. So I'm putting seven there. Naturally, it's seven. So it's starting from seven and ending at eight. That is how grid works. It's, it doesn't end at, you know, seven. It, it just ends at eight. I'm going to explain that later. But now I want it to end at the very end. That will be negative one. The reason you want to use negative one is because you don't want to always remember how many columns you are grid has so negative ones mean to the very end and then i'm going to select now the beautiful thing about oxygen css grid is that you're doing everything on the parent you don't even need to bother to select this go back to select this now i'm selecting this now at this i want this one to span 
like say four out of the 10. So I want it to span four. So you can see it's spanning four. And now we could leave it like that, but for the overlap to work, we have to define where it's gonna end. So I'm gonna, um, I think it should span five. Okay, that makes it, you know, I like it being wider that, like that. And then we want it to end. Now, if I put five here, you can see that it goes back, it shrinks because ending at five means it's effectively four columns, but you want it to end at six. And then I'm gonna explain that to you. So let's save this, and then we're gonna to go to the front end, take a look at what is going on here. So I'm going to the front end right now. Of course, this other one is not showing yet because there is no height, but let's take a look at what is going on here. Uh, I'm going to select this. Now, if I select this, you can see those grid divisions there. Uh, but unfortunately, if I move my mouse away, it's going to go. So I want to use my screen uh, snippet and then I want to snip it. So in three seconds, so that will allow me time to hover on this. And then I'm going to snip that. Now, so you want to see that this card starts from here and ends here. So you see one, two, three, four, five. And you may wonder, okay, it is it ends by five. Well, no, it ends at six because the grid starts counting at the very edge. So you see the first line here is one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if you want it to end at five, that means you're making it four columns. But if you want it to have five columns, then you are ending at six. Okay, so there we have it. So I'm going to go in here and then we're going to overlap this. So what I want to do is I'm going to first of all select this. Now we want to define the row span. I want to set this row span to 10. That is how many row it's going to span. Now 10 again, for the same reason, it's easier for percentage to know the values you're going to give. And then I want it to start 10 and end 10. In this case, 10 over 10. And then I'm going to go to this one. You see, this represent this. And you know, these things are properly represented visually here. Unfortunately, my contrast is not very good here. Maybe it should be more. I think I will update my you know, editor tweak to account for making this very, very obvious because this should be very bright colors. Anyway, so I'm going to select this, which represent this, and I want it to, you know, span like, so if we go to our example, out of 10, I want it to span like, say, maybe four. I'm going to make it four. The trick here, okay, is to start with 10 over 10, okay? 10 over 10. Now, that is the trick because it's going to be very tricky if you don't start with, trust me, it's going to be very tricky if you don't start with 10 over 10. So scrap what I said earlier, start with 10 over 10. So both of them have 10 over 10. You can already see they are overlapping. Even the, the, the graphical representation here is showing that they are overlapping. Now, now what you do, the trick is in reducing this, the row span by two. You have to reduce it by two. So it has to be two. So if I take this to eight, and then if you reduce it by two to distribute it evenly, to have an even amount of uh, spacing up and bottom, you have to reduce this by one. You can see. So if I reduce this again to six, I have to reduce this by one, making it eight. If I reduce this again to four, I have to reduce this by one, making it seven. So you see that we have equal amount of space. Now let me recap again you have to reduce these, the span by two. And then you have to reduce this for every two reduction that this has, this has one reduction. So you have four over seven or uh, six over eight or eight over nine or 10 over 10, okay. So now we have that. Now, if you wanna uh, increase the spacing up and down, you're gonna be using the row gap. That is why I didn't set it to zero. So the row gap is 20 and you can have 30 making that bigger. But I think I'm okay. If you have 40, it makes that bigger. But I think I'm okay with 20, which is the default. I'm going to go ahead and change this to uh, CSS uh, grid overlap. And then I'm going to copy some Ip lorem ipsum text and put here just to make this look okay. And then my button, I want to just say learn more and change the bottom color to black. I just love how fast it is to access settings in oxygen. It's the workflow. It's really, you know, when I use other builders, you know, I, I you have to go into dig into settings to get stuff like this, but everything is just 
there for you in Oxygen. Now, this is behind this. That's because of stacking context. Uh, the HTML element that comes last always have a stacking, a higher stacking order. So um, to do to to sort that out, I'm just going to select this and then I'm going to go to the Z index and set that to one. And that solves that. So I'm going to save this. Let's take a look at the front end and see what we have. And let's refresh that. And that gives me that just like we have here. OK, in this case, we have this coming in slightly, you know, inside. That's because uh, we may have had that for that could have been uh, eight span eight columns okay so that is eight columns so if we take a look at the front end again uh we see that that you know just just like this that goes in and and that's all so there we have it you can overlap in this manner so how about responsive let's go back to the lower breakpoint so here from here i don't want it to to be like that. So I'm going to go back and enable grid again, and then I'm going to set this to one. And I'm going to go uh, back here, and then the column span I'm going to set to one, the row span I'm going to set to one for that. For this, I'm going to also do the same thing, one, one. So, and then I'm going to set the gap to zero. This um, doesn't have a height. Okay, let's go back to the higher breakpoints. Something is not right there. So this was eight over negative one. Okay and there okay so for some reason that changed i'm not quite sure why but of course it's, it's fixed now okay so now if we go back here you could always uh set match height of tallest child but that wouldn't give you a very good result so you can set that here or you know at that break point but i don't want that you know it's not an ideal way to set the height of a background image um anyway at uh, this my background is not looking good so i should have set it to no repeat cover you know 50 percent and 50 percent all right that looks better so now uh let's go back to the grid parent so when we go back here this one we need this one to have a minimum height so now when you have a, a div with a background image that background image doesn't give you a div height so you always have, want to give it a minimum height so i'm giving it a minimum height of 100 250 uh, typically you want the image to come first okay so uh, if i want the image to come first i will just go into the order okay layout order and we don't have an order property here because uh we this is not a flex box okay but we should have an order so i'm just going to type this order uh negative one now that brings it now if i say one two it's not going to work because this has an order of zero okay so negative one brings it to the top so now from that lower breakpoint we have that working in that respect okay so i'm going to collapse this so we have everything being fully responsive all right and then that's all for your overlapping column what what if you wanted it to alternate what if you want to have maybe when you duplicate this section it alternates okay this moves here now you can do that. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna just delete this. Now I wanna give this section a class. So I'm just gonna give it um, alt section, okay? Just gonna go to grid alternating section, okay? I wanna use that class to target the grid item, okay, the grid parent. And I need to give this to a class. So this is gonna be the grid child overlap. And then this is going to be my grid child background okay so i'm going to call that grid child bg all right so this saves as my background this saves as the overlay so i'm giving those class because i want to target it with css so i'm going to go into style sheet and then i think i have a style sheet here so um now i want to let me remember what was that class again it is uh grid all section okay i'm going to copy that and then i'm going to go to that my css grid style sheet and then i'm just going to put a dot here and paste that and i want to target the nth child okay even all right and then for that even i want to target the grid uh what did we call the parent was the grid container okay css grid dash container now the reason you're doing this with the style sheet is because we are using the the section so we're targeting from the section that is why we can use the interface if we were going to target the grid container directly 
now we would use the interface but because of i mean it's much easier to manage the style sheet anyway so i'm going to target that then i want to target the grid child the first thing i want to target is the grid child overlap now what do we write here we want to essentially now before we do that i'm going to duplicate this okay 100d so we have two on the page i'm just going to zoom out just a little bit okay now we have two on the page uh, then we're going to go to the front end and then we're going to check the property so we're going to copy that property for this one we have a prop okay so i think i may be covering something here let me just move that out of the way all right so we have uh this property for this one okay for this one i'm going to just right click and copy all declaration and then i'm coming to that style sheet and i'm going to paste that now what we want to do here is that the grid column was spanning five and it ended by six but this time around we wanted to end at the very end so we want to end at negative one and then the row i think the row is okay we don't have to do anything i'm going to get rid of this height because we don't need it i'm going to copy this paste here again of course i don't need this i want to target the grid child bg okay dash bg and then let's see this was the bg and then i'm going to look for the grid settings here okay right click copy all declaration so we are essentially reversing that so i'm going to remove the 100 percent height and then this started this span it but it started it ended at the very end but we don't want it to end at the very end we want it to end just naturally where it should end so now remember if we give it eight that means we're making it to span seven so we're going to give it nine so we have that so that alternate and so now anytime you go ahead and duplicate a section you see it's going to alternate so i duplicate then it alternates duplicate it alternate now let's take a look at the responsive now this this is okay this oh the first one is good but for every alternate things get screwed up okay I mean, this could be a style, but no, 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 we don't want that. It's not intentional. So we want to get it back to this. Now, the reason it's screwed up is because this alternating CSS, you know, is affecting all breakpoints. So we want to wrap that in a media query. So I'm going to wrap it at media. Now it is messing it up at 768. So we don't want that. So we, want, we don't want it to apply from 768 below. So I'm going to say uh, minimum width. So the minimum width we want this to apply is let's say uh, 769 pixels and then i'm just gonna copy all this just to move all that inside there so you can see everything works properly at the lower breakpoint but at the upper breakpoint let me collapse this at the upper breakpoint we have our alternating columns but these you know works wow so how was that if you like this video and if you learned something from it hit the like button don't go without hitting that like button and hit the notification if you've been watching without subscribing well you're welcome to subscribe but then until next time have a great day bye